Stampers. My name is Linda Bevinger and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Denver, Colorado. I'm so glad you could join me this afternoon. I have a very fast project that really lends itself to a little bit of what we're going through right now. I was on a conversation with some friends and one of the ladies that I was talking to asked the question, what are you never going to take for granted again? And it really has stuck with me. And I've thought about it and thought about it um, and come up with my own list <laughs> of things that I'll never take for granted again as the result of living through this once in a lifetime, I hope, once in a lifetime <laughs> situations that we're going through. And um, I found something in the catalog and I ordered a couple of these little journals. And uh, let's just get started on the project. It's very fast, but um, it speaks to the times and it would be a fun, easy project to send to friends. So let's just get started. Okay, here is my little journal. And you can see by the size of my hand, it's not giant. It's fairly small. And in the catalog, the journal itself, uh, called Pressed Petals Journal. And it's on page 170. And it's $6.50. Then what I did was I have a package of these copper dotted treat bags. And I used that to create my background. And then I like the idea of a very strongly contrasting color on here. So I'm using Gorgeous Great. So let me show you a little bit about the journal. The journal, you really don't have to do, now you certainly can put other images on the inside of the journal, but I might just leave mine. Um, the secret to having it all is knowing that you already do. <laughs> Cute. And there are pages that have flowers, and grateful for small things, big things, and everything in between. And just pages and pages with all kinds of prompts. Today I'm grateful. And because the theme of that is grateful, find the beauty in everyday moments, it just spoke to me about where we are. And there's lots of little pages in here. And they repeat and there's places to put, oh, even a picture if you wanted to, or stamp some other, um, some other images. Um, and but I thought it would be a lovely little gift for not very much at all that I could send to a few friends. And so I bought several of these little journals. And I have one here that I haven't started, and all I've done is decorate the front. I thought that they had done a good enough job on the inside here that I really don't have to add anything. Now, you certainly can. You can add die cuts and flowers and other pieces of designer series paper and just all kinds of things. But I thought I would share with you what I did to make this cover front. And so here is my blank journal, and I have a piece of scrap of uh, gorgeous grape, and I have one of these little treat bags. And I'm using some inks, and I'm using a blending brush, and I'm going to show you, and then the dies that I used, See, where did I put them? Here they are. Sweet Silhouette Dies. And you have this beautiful tree die here. And then you have Inspire Forever and Adventure. And then you have this Dandelion. So there are five total dies. 
Now, this die is very intricate, and so I ended up cutting mine using my magnetic plate and a shim and running it through a couple times. I think this is one that you ought to run through on the intricate die, the, what's it called? I'll put the name of it up on top. Guess is that'll cut like butter on there. I ended up cu cutting several of them, um, and you need a piece of paper that's around four by five and a quarter uh, in order for that die to fit on there, and because it's pretty big. It's, it's pretty big. So let me show you exactly what I did to make this. And like I said, it really is quite simple. A couple of steps and not much more. So I took my treat bag. And by the way, these treat bags come, they come in a package of 10 bags for, I think it's $5.50. Five fifty. So you could. I, I saw somebody do a front of a car, just a small panel of a piece like this. And if you were to do a smaller panel, you could probably get four different projects out of one of these treat bags. So it's a pretty good bargain, and it's covered in little copper dots and lines. So, so you could have some fun with some copper elements on this as well. But what I did was I put my treat bag right here on my trimmer and I sliced away the edges. And and I sliced away the bottom and again just a sliver because I want to maintain as much of this as I can. So there we end up with two pieces um, and um, my measurements on this, let me find my note, my measurements on this is that this piece of paper, and it, it's actually quite thin, it really is a treat bag, I cut down to four and three quarters by three and three quarters. So, if I put this back here and I get to three and three quarters, and then I turn it this way and get to four and three quarters, there we go. There's my piece for the front of my journal, and on this piece, I cut this piece four inches by five inches. So I'm gonna cut this four inches by five inches. And there we go. We have just about everything you need. Now, on the stamp set, I ended up using from a big thank you because I couldn't find a grateful just all by itself. So I used this stamp, Grateful Every Day for You. And what I've done is when I go to stamp this, I'm going to mask off the bottom so that all I get inked up is my grateful. Then you remove your uh, post-it note and you can see I stamped my grateful right here next to next to the tree since that was really the message of this. What am I grateful for? All right. So, uh, and what I did was I did some sponging on this. So I'm going to grab a piece of scratch paper here, and we're going to work on this piece. And the colors that I used were Gorgeous Grape, Mango Melody, I used Granny Apple Green, Melon Mambo, and Pineapple Punch. I'm so sad to see it go. It's one of the in colors that's gonna go away, but this Pineapple Punch is 
probably the best yellow I think we have ever had. And I do just love the color. What I'm going to do is just pick one to start. And I'll start with my paint pineapple punch. And what I have is a wet baby wipe right next to me. And that's how I'm going to clean my brush off. I like using a bigger brush. Um, and you can see I've got a residue from when I did the other one. So I'm going to just brush that off there. And then I'm going to pick up my yellow. And I'm going to put, now you can do this with a sponge or a dauber too, but I love the soft kind of uh, look that you get with one of these blending brushes. Uh, please stampin' up, can we have blending brushes? <laughs> and what I'm going to do is put this color on fairly heavily in several places on this little piece of paper. So maybe right along and in there and maybe once right here on this edge. And there we go. I've got my color down in the yellow. Now I'm just going to push that off from there. I'm going to close and move out my pineapple punch and I'm going to move on to melon mambo and I'm going to pick up a little bit and depending on where you put your finger on the back of this brush you can get heavy pressure down or you can just ease in from the side and this is a fairly strong color but I do want a pretty good saturation of the color. And where I cross over the yellow, it's going to give me kind of an orangey color. So I'm going to put a bunch of this right in the center, a little bit up here at the top. And this is this is all pretty random. Um, just getting a little bit of color in several places on my paper. And it looks like I'll need to blend that in a little bit there. Okay, now I'm going to wipe that color off of my blending brush and put this away. And I'm going to go into... Mango Melody, which is another of my favorite colors. I love this color. And I'm going to call that done. The colors are pretty intense. And then I've got my piece of gorgeous grape. And what I'm going to do then is to just put some snail on the back of my paper. And put this in place. Look at how it just pulls out the purples and the melon mambo. And put that into place. And I can see one place here where it's not blended. And there we go. All right. That's 
my story. <laughs> and I'm going to take a little Kleenex and I'm going to just go over the top of this and what I'm going to do by doing this is pick up any of the ink that has landed on top of the copper and dulled any of the copper. It's like emboss resist. So if I can just go over it a little I can pull up any and it pulled up a little and it should brighten that copper a little bit. So there we have it. So, again, very simple, very fast. You could knock a bunch of these out in an afternoon. I'm going to grab my um, mat here, and I'm going to do my stamping of my grateful. I know that this tree is going to go down like this, and so the room for stamping my grateful is right in here. And here is my stamp. So I'm going to mask off everything else and bring in my memento ink. And stamp, ink up my grateful stamp away right here. I'm going to let that sit for a minute. And I'm going to end up using my black marker here to go over the word grateful where it didn't stamp down quite the way I wanted. It's pretty close. Simple enough fix though. There we go. So now all I have to do is get this piece put down on my card front and I have my silicone mat and my dot tape runner and I am just going to, as patiently as I can, add a little glue to these leaves on this tree. Okay, so now there we go. My tree is down, and then um, if you do have any residual glue that's left on your project, you can use your glue eraser or your the other end of your sand eraser to pick off any little pieces of glue that have kind of managed to stick around and actually this is done pretty well there's very little residue and so there we have it isn't that pretty I, I just love the idea of this whole thing it just um, so simple and so easy and so I'm going to then put some snail on the back side of this. Now this little cover is embossed uh, with, um, uh, I'm not sure what they embossed it with, but it's an uneven surface so I'm putting plenty of glue down and then I'm going to center this on the front of my book. And there we have it. A nice, simple, fast little project 
that's relatively inexpensive and could go to someone with a little note or a card from you that um, would indicate that now's the time maybe for us to think about what we're grateful for and what we'll never take for granted again. And I love the thought. And so there is my grateful journal. I'm going to be making several of these and passing them out to a few of my friends. <laughs> and thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel today. I do so appreciate it. And if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I'd love to be your demonstrator. Or you could join my team. Um, let's see. Joining Stampin' Up! is uh, always a good deal. $125 worth of product for $99. You don't have to meet your first minimum until the end of September, so you have really until October to do it. And um, if you're spending money on craft supplies, this is a much better idea from the standpoint of everything matches, the colors match, the papers match, the ink, and everything that you buy from Stampin' Up! is just very high quality. And um, so think about it. My number is always listed below the video. And if you'd like to chat about it, give me a call. My prize for the month of April is the well said and well written. Uh, we used to be a bundle, but one of them is a die set that has all kinds of words that can be die cut out. And the stamp set is a two box stamp set. Um, that has tons and tons and tons of sentiments on it. So it is definitely something that you find useful. So and all you have to do is put an order on my on my store, lbedinger.stampinup.net, or you can get to it through my blog, www.inkandingenuity.com. Thanks again for stopping by, and I'll be back soon with more cards, more projects, and more tips. Bye.